Oh, so what, viewers? This is Andrea. Um, so I'm going to do like kind of like one of those videos where you test a product or see how it works. I bought some dye. I know that a lot of people dye their yarn with the fancy dyes, but I don't want to get into that if I don't really like what I'm doing. So I'm going to get some of the stuff that costs a little bit less, you know, costs a little bit less. So I went ahead and picked up at my local craft store a kit like this. I'm going to test out these colors, maybe not all of them in this video, but eventually I'll test all of them. And I want to see how well it works. And I picked up a cone of cotton yarn. Um, this is 100% cotton. It's the kind of yarn that you would buy to um, um, make like washcloths. Um, so if you're going to crochet some washcloths or, or knit. Um, let's see, it says it's a medium number four weight yarn. So it's 100% cotton. So we're going to see how that works. I also picked up some soda ash from Tulip. Um, it says this will be good to help the yarn take the take the dye, and so I'm going to put my gloves on, and see we'll see how this works. So give me just a second, and we'll be right back, and we'll start doing the dyeing. Okay, so I'm ready to do the dye, and according to the box right here, it says. To wear protective gloves, which I am, these fancy little gloves here, they give you these in the package. You get two little, oops, you get two cubes like this of powder of the soda ash. It says fill a bucket with one gallon of water. So I'm going to use my, and of course I recommend, of course I'm not an expert, as um, a fellow YouTuber on my dad's channel, um, one that he follows. Um, his name is, his channel is called Old Camp. Um, he says disclaimer. <laughs> so my disclaimer is I am not an expert, so, but I do recommend that you use um, whatever you use to dye or use with the soda ash and what you don't use with food. So this picture will no longer be used for anything other than what I'm doing. Um, so it says to fill this bucket. So this is a one gallon bucket with water and then dissolve the soda ash packet and then soak your fabric or your yarn or whatever you're going to be dyeing for 20 minutes. So I'm going to go fill this up in my sink and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the water in my bucket here as you can see. Now I'm going to open up the soda ash and in case there's any flyaway powder, you know, when you open something like this. I'm going to stand back a little bit because I don't want to get that. You don't want to inhale it. I'm sure it's probably not a good thing. And it is hot today, everybody, here in Michigan. It is 91 degrees, which, you know, anybody who's from here knows that we have stuff like that, but usually it's like in August for like a week, and it's been like every week since... I don't know, beginning and end of May, just before May. So yeah, it's been pretty hot. All right, so I'm going to clip the edge here, put a hole here, and then I'm just going to pour it in. And just like I said, I have a spatula that I have especially for this, so it's not going to be reused around food. Just going to dump it in, dump it in. You take the whole, you put the whole packet in. I didn't cut a big enough hole, so it's taking me a minute. So just give me one second here to get this all out of here. You can see it going down in there. And you're like, hurry up, you should have put a big hole. <laughs> Alrighty, come on. Alright, so we're going to get that in there, and then we're going to stir it up. Make sure it's dissolved. So I'm going to take my spatula here and I'm going to stir it up really good. And then we're going to get our yarn ready for the mix. And what I'm going to do is take a yardstick. 
because I want to make these in little hank sizes. I don't want to do the whole cone because I want to do different colors. So I'm going to take a yardstick and I'll, we'll get to that and I'll show you how we do that. And I'm going to make some hanks to, to do that with. So, Alright, so I'm going to finish getting this dissolved and then we'll be back and I'll, we'll start with the hanks of yarn. Okay, so I got my yardstick. And in order to do this, I've seen lots of tutorials, but this I've found is the best way for me to do it because I want my hanks to be kind of small. Um, so, uh, I'm going to put them on a yardstick here. So I take a little push pin and I'm going to put it in the beginning of the yardstick here. And then I put one down at the other end as well. And I'm going to wrap my yarn around, and I'm not sure, I think I'm going to, I'm going to look up, I'm probably going to make the yank hanks about as big as as much you need for a, for a dishcloth. Um, and then we'll tie them up and stick them in the mixture, and in just a minute I'll be back and we'll start. Alright, so I just want to show you guys the process. I'm gonna, um, I had my son look up for me. How much you need for one washcloth so I'm at 37 yards right now because you need a hundred for one washcloth and as you can see I'm just wrapping the yarn on the yardstick around the two pins back and forth counting as I go so I will meet you back here when I get to the end all right so I'm almost done here I got a couple more rounds to go When we're done then we'll cut a couple pieces off of this and we will then tie a few ties around it because that way when you're soaking it in the soda ash it will stay together and not get all clumped like you know when you're sewing and you get all those knots well if I were to put these into this linda like that I'd have a big old knot ball so like if you tried to wash and put your yarn in the dryer and, and you know it's a big old jumbled mess so I'm going to cut me like four, probably six ties, <coughs> excuse me, and like I said, these are just going to help them from coming, becoming tangled while they're soaking and while they're being dyed, and if you, you're, depending on how you're going to dye your, your yarn, um, you're going to need to decide, because if you don't want to tie them too tight, if you want that not that spot it's kind of like tie-dye if you put the rubber band too tight in that spot it's going to keep it white so you have to keep in mind either either you're going to have to saturate that area more if you have a yarn that or a tie that like if you're using a zip tie because you could use a zip tie or you could use rubber bands if you wanted to or plastic ties or whatever but if you're using if you use the I find that if I use the cotton yarn or the same yarn that I'm dying then I just have to saturate that area a little more and then it will still dye it but that's completely up to you but just remember just like tie dyeing if you don't if you tie it too tight then you will have a jumbled mess all right so now I'm going to bring you down here I'm going to try to find the center using my scissors very carefully not to pull it apart because I want to put the ties directly through the center and I think this is my center. All right, so what I'm going to do is carefully put one of my ties through here and then just tie it. You don't need to really knot it, but you just want it not to come off either. So I would just tie it twice like that. And then what you also want to do is to tie your ends together. Now I'm going to have I'm going to tie them like this. Because that way, those that will also help it from becoming a jumbled mess. And it's not that much, so you can snip that to start. Because when I'm done here, I'm going to tie these up like the little yarn hanks. Because I just think it looks really cool that way. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish tying this up, and we'll be right back, and we'll start dyeing. Or we'll put it... I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. We'll start with the soda ash. Okay, so now I have this all hanked up, or ready to be dyed. Just like so. And now I'm going to put my glove on, and we're going to soak this in the soda ash. And it says it has to soak for 20 minutes. So I'm going to go over here and set my timer. All right, and then so we're going to take this and we're going to completely submerge it into the soda ash. Now make sure that you're wearing your glove. I just think it's a good idea and I use this to kind of help submerge it and you can then use your spatula to hold it down to keep it submerged. Um, you could also pour this if you had a pan that you're again like I said not using for food. Um, you could lay a bunch of these out maybe get some of those foil pans and then pour this mixture in over all of your hanks laying in there um, and then you then will have um, you have you can do more than one at once so all right uh, we'll be back here in 20 minutes and then we will pull this out and when it's done we are t we're going to start dying see you back here in 20 minutes okay so it's just about two more minutes to go and so while we're finishing up waiting for the soda ash soap to finish um, I wanted to say that um, as always um, all the products that I used in the video today I will put a uh, link to um, where you can purchase them from the manufacturer um, in the description below um, and if you're new to the channel um, welcome and I hope you're enjoying and if you could do me a favor and, and hit that subscribe button um, and then make sure you stay up to date with all the fun and, and craziness we'll be having on the channel and, and and also if you have an idea for a video or you would like to see me demonstrate something please comment below I do try to read all the comments and get back to you if I can um, and you know I you can also um, follow me on my Instagram and Facebook channel. Um, the links to those will be also be in the description. And I will probably be posting a pictures of the finished products of the dyeing today on my Instagram page. So look for that. Um, and all of my hand dyed yarns um, will be coming soon in my, um, my shop. So my link to that will be on my Instagram and I'll also put a link in the description. So thank you for watching and we're just about ready here to finish up with the dyeing. So the timer has gone off. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the soda ash uh, soak. I'm going to rinse this out and then we'll be right back and we'll get dyeing. Okay, so what I've done is I have taken the yarn out of the soda soak, soda ash soak, and I am going to then lay it on this contraption that I've set up here. So what it is, is um, I'm, I got a baking sheet that, um, again, I'm using strictly for dyeing, and a drying rack, and this will just help with the pouring of the you know make it more precise than that so and it'll help catch all my you know it doesn't make a mess so I'm gonna make this like a variegated effect so I'm gonna work in sections and the colors I've chosen from the pack are this green color and if you hear a vacuum in the background it's my son outside he's vacuuming his car so and then I'm gonna use this pinkish fuchsia color so hoping this turns out really cute like I said I'll have the picture of the finished product on my Instagram so stay tuned for that all right so what I'm gonna do and like I said I use the cotton yarn to make my ties so I'll just soak those areas extra extra you know extra and if for some reason it doesn't go all the way through that's okay because you know in tie-dye it doesn't always you know you don't always soak everything through you do have that little bit of white that shows through so it'll just add to that variegated effect so using my gloved hand <laughs> I did cheat and I don't have a glove on this hand but um, 
I just find it easier to work with just one glove. That's just me. <laughs> okay, so we're going to just pour the dye. And the soda ash is supposed to help it so that it's, it soaks up your dye easier. So I'm going to just pour it on like that. Let's see if I zoom in like right there and so you can see. Zoom in a little further. Okay. So I'm just pouring it on very gradually. I'm not like, you know, being all he woman with it. But I just want to cover all of the area really good. And it doesn't take a lot. And if you want to, you can open it up, turn it around, make sure it's getting in there really good. And the reason why I have that pan underneath is to catch the drips, or if you do that and accidentally squirt it. But I'm just going to pour it, and these bottles make it so nice to pre get precision, so I can I can make it go where I want it. I think I'm really liking this green color. So, we're just going to keep putting it in this little general area. So I'm satisfied with the color coverage. And if you want, you can kind of like squeeze it, make sure it's getting in there real good. Put some more over here. Now I haven't done it yet, but maybe that'll be a good idea for another video. Um, there's a trick you can do with the ice cubes, where you set the ice cubes on top of the yarn, and then you pour the, you put the powder. So no, back up. So you put the powder on the yarn, sprinkle it where you want it, and then you stick the ice cubes over top. And as the ice cubes melt, it creates the tie dye look. I bet that would be really cool on some yarn. Maybe we should do that for a video. If you like that idea, go ahead and comment below and tell me, yes, let's do that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to zoom back out here. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scoop my yarn around. I have this towel that I don't care that gets dirty. I'm just going to wet my hands on it so I don't get green where I don't want it. And if you do, it's okay because maybe it'll look cool that way. All right, so then I'm going to leave a little bit of this white because, like I said, I want it to be that variegated look. So we're going to scoop this around. All right, so now I'm going to take my pink. And we're going to do some pink. So let me open the pink. Didn't want to come off there. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do the pink. And again, we're going to do it just like we did the others. I'm just going to squirt it on. And I can tell already the difference because I've tied, I've tie dyed or tried to do this before without soaking it in that soda ash. And I mean, it works, but it didn't seem, it kind of had that like, you know, after you've washed clothes, like colored clothing a lot and it gets that faded look. It's kind of what it looked like after you rinsed it out and that was only after one rinse. But I can already tell the difference of what this looks like soaking in. I think this is going to look amazing. We're just going to squirt this in here. Again, making sure we get good coverage of all the areas. And I'm going to squeeze it, make sure it's getting in there good. I'm going to go all the way to this tie here. Now, if it isn't perfect, the best thing about this is it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you know, when you buy yarn or variegated yarn in the store from the manufacturers, there's always these spots where it looks like the you know, dye dripped or dyed on other spots, and that's okay <laughs> because it just it just it just adds to the tie dye effect of the variegated yarn. I think I'm going to put a little bit more red in here because I'm really loving this fuchsia purple color. It's really an awesome. This would be a great hair color, I think. I don't know. 
I'm not opposed to putting weird colors in my hair. I think this would be a cool color. I wonder if this would work for hair dye. Probably not. Probably not a good idea. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. I'm thinking this looks pretty good, and you can always flip it over and check. Oh, I'm going to add some more right there. Yeah, this is definitely working out quite awesome. Cannot wait to see what it looks like when it's done. So I know this is this is fabric dye for like fabric t-shirts, you know, most people use it to dye t-shirts, but I decided, hey, this yarn is cotton, no different than a cotton t-shirt, and so why not give it a try? You never know until you try. Alrighty, so now I'm going to turn it again, get my yarn turned around, and then go back with the green color. And like I said, I'm just randomly throwing it on here. There's no right or wrong, rhyme or reason. Just spraying it wherever I think. And this dye goes a long way. So you could do several, sev probably several hanks of this. Just is amazing. Color is phenomenal. Nice rich colors. All right, so then I'm going to do some more red over here. I did get some green on that, but that's okay. We're going to cover it up with the red. It'll just be a little bit darker. the best part about doing, you know, I work my day job. I do work at a craft, uh, a larger change craft store. And people always ask me, um, you know, they basically want me to tell them that there's a right or wrong answer. And you know what? The best thing about doing crafts yourself and doing this your DIY stuff yourself is there is no right or wrong answer. It is whatever you like and whatever you think looks good. So just play with it, make it your own, and have fun. I mean, what's what? we only live once, right? So we should have fun with everything. And I am all about being your own person, doing what you like and what you love, because you are the only one that can make you happy. So this is turning out phenomenal. Really, really, really like it. Alrighty, so I'll me. I'm gonna touch up a few areas here, and then I'll meet you right back here in just a minute. All right, so welcome back. So now what I'm gonna do is just leave this on here to dry, and when it is dry, it says that you. I think it says on the package you have to wait four hours. I think it said before you can rinse it out, but 72 hours before you can actually wash it. Of course, you wouldn't need to really wash it until you're ready to use it. Um, and then, so, like I said, on my Instagram channel, I'm going to have the picture of the finished product all hanked up and ready to go. So, and like I said, if you enjoyed, please hit that like button and remember to subscribe. And, um, a special thanks to the Tulip Company. Um, I just really like their dyeing products and I use it for all of my tie dyeing. Um, and their products work really well and I've never had a complaint yet so thanks for that and as always um, thank you for watching and so what is in your craft room today